their first year they'd come up and like peck on you, peck your ear, and they're, they're a lot calmer now. I'm not gonna peck my eyeball out, is it? No. Greetings, friends. For the past couple weeks, I've been sharing with you some videos of our time at White House on the Hill. And let me tell you, Jake and Becky have a, a really amazing place there. And one of the areas that we didn't cover in some of those videos is their garden space where they have fruit trees growing, a really neat greenhouse that they're constructing. It's almost done, but it looks really, really nice. It's really nice. They also have some garden spaces where they're growing a number of things like watermelons. Looks good in here. There's that one, and there's that second one. Those look great. So we had them down over there last year and we got a ton of aphids, a lot of bugs on them. And so we're trying it up in the raised bed this year. And tomatoes. We got to try a couple of those tomatoes. They're really yeah, good. Yeah, they were really good. And they're also growing peas on a trellis made of cattle panels. Yeah, I love using cattle panels. And one of the things that is really unique about their homestead is the variety of birds that they are raising. They have a lot. They, they're doing their basic things like your layer chickens, but they also have some rare chickens as well. But also within their lay-in chickens, they have so many different varieties. It's really cool to see all the different ones all running around together. It's really cool. They also have guineas and pheasants and pigeons and turkeys and some rare ducks too. And then they also have your typical things like your cows and they have some pigs and those are really neat to see. And they have a peacock too. And not everywhere do we go do we see a peacock. So it was neat to see a peacock. But one of the things that he is raising on his homestead, when he was telling me about it, I must admit, I was getting a little scared. So these are five of our hives. The one at the, the one at the very end doesn't have anything in it right now. So these are five of our hives, and then we have one more up by the garden. Is our, our flow hive is up there. And so we were doing a rainbow theme here. I already had bees in there, so I couldn't paint that one blue. I could probably do it this winter. Um, but probably stay without at least more than five feet away because this yellow one and kind of the white one are starting to get pretty mean. So if I get anywhere close to them now, they start to attack me. Oh, is that a hive about ready to be split or? Yeah. Yeah, we tried to take some honey maybe a month ago in one of our videos and man, they got mad at me. They attacked me for a long time after I messed with them. So I kind of don't want to mess with those two, but everybody else has been pretty good. So my adrenaline went up a little bit being around those bees, but it went up even more when we saw this animal. And this animal that I had, I had really been wanting to see, and this is one of the reasons, in addition to come seeing their family, I wanted to see this animal the most, but at the same time, I was nervous about seeing it because I was afraid that this animal was gonna like peck out my eyeball or something. All right, so I've been wanting to see this one animal that you've had for quite some time. So is that what's next? Our dog's right here. Our dog's right here. You're right there, Jay. You're right there. You're right there. Oh, you want to see the emus. Yes, the emus. You want to see them too, Sayla? Yep. I've right. really been wanting to see. I still remember when you had them running around your living room. Yeah. <laughs> running Those around your days. house. We might finally get some offspring, some babies from them this year and get to do that again, but that was a lot of fun. <laughs> that was really neat seeing that. So can we see him? Let's do it. All right. Come on in. Whoa. Whoa. They're much better than they used to be. Their first year they'd come up and like peck on you, peck your ear, and they're, they're a lot calmer now. I'm not gonna peck my eyeball out, is it? No, they're pretty good now. She actually, she'll sit down a lot of times when I start petting her. I think the feather's taken off. I think that they might be doing some breeding, and so I think that might be his feet um, stepping there and scraping that bed off. So this is Cashew, and then on the other side we have Peekaboo, and so they're two females. They're both blonde emus. And then bamboo is our male. And so these two are, are blondes, are two females. And so standard color, that's what you normally see 
Uh, they're native to Australia, and oh. somewhere in there, they their genetics developed a, a blonde. And then if you breed two blonde, so then these two together can either produce a standard or a blonde. And then if you breed two blondes together, you can get a white where you just get the white feather without the dark. And those are, blonde is pretty rare. And then a white is really rare. I think there's only a few hundred uh, white emus in the world. So bamboo is really friendly. But he's, we had him in the house for a few months when he was young and so he's been really friendly with us and then the females they're pretty friendly but they've I think they've calmed down a bit since we first had them they used to be a lot more aggressive against us but now they're they're really friendly you can't keep two females with a male because they start to fight over the male really yeah and so the the females are dominant they do they kind of determine everything they're bigger they uh they will lay the eggs and then the male will sit on the eggs and raise the young. And so these guys are, are bigger. When you hear the that bass sound, that's coming from the females. Comes they have this big air sac. You can feel down here, it's like this big just just uh, open space down in their chest and um, they make this really loud bass noise and we hear it like all night long we're in bed. And even from, you know, a couple hundred, uh, maybe a hundred yards away, we can hear their bass sound all night long. So that's not a high school football game going on around here with that. Right. <laughs> it's all our emus, yeah. In that air sac that Jake is talking about, we actually got the feel, and it did feel really, really interesting. I can't say that I felt anything like it before. It's pretty cool. It's just kind of, I don't know, it's like skin and air i don't know it's like a pocket very different so feel when you guys feel this area right here on them you won't feel on the male but here on the female you'll feel oh, it the, the uh-huh oh yeah it's real loose there you can feel like it's a big air yeah. bag yeah yeah <laughs> without air in it right now yeah so one of the main things that i was wondering about raising emus is probably some of the things that you're wondering about them as well it's like how do you actually take care of them what kind of water the system do they need? Feed? Can they handle the climate? And he answered some of those questions. So what type of feed do these guys require? We get a ratite feed, an emu feed, from our, our feed mill. We're lucky that they make one, because um, otherwise you have, you'd have to order online through a couple companies and they're, they're quite a bit more expensive. So I think it's pretty heavy on alfalfa in their feed, um, but they make one specific to their dietary needs. And so we just have them, we have some um, tubs inside each of their house to keep it dry. And they just go in there and eat that. And then they really love like fruit snacks. So we'll bring out like grapes. Um, they love eating on grapes or any little pieces of fruit. They'll, they'll eat from those. They really liked um, the little kiddie pools when they were little. But now then as soon as their toes got bigger and sharper, they sort of ripping right through the little, the little plastic pools, and so we thought they'd like this pool over here, um, but it was just a little too deep, like of a step down for them. They don't really like that pool, so I think we're going to do more of a natural, um, a natural pond, something that's like uh, maybe either like a, a concrete deal that we fill water in, or something that they can just wade out into, because I think they'll like. They're a lot of fun when you get them wet. I just uh, cleaned out their pool today, and the fun part about that is that I released it into like a little, um, little crevice, or I don't know what you call it, a little ditch back behind it, and so that fills up, and they actually do love going down into that, and so they'll go over there. We'll let Bamboo go over with Peekaboo, and they'll they'll both sit down in there and and uh, have a ton of fun. Um, as far as weather, they do just fine. Like we, when it's winter, they have no problem. When they, it's icy out, they do get pretty skittish because they'll we usually when it's uh when it's snowing out or raining out or something in the winter we try to get them into their house and then if it's icy at all out here they they get really scared and they really they won't move anywhere now do they go up at night or they just kind of go up whenever they feel like it or no they don't really use their house a ton they usually hang outside most of the time especially when they're younger i don't i haven't watched real close i think they kind of wander in and out 
all night long. But we tried to get them in different places because a lot uh, to for shade. Uh, we really wanted them to go in there when it would rain and stuff, but they don't seem to be too bothered by it. One of the things that was really neat about the house that Jake has for the emus is the art gallery that's inside their house. Pictures from fans from all over yeah. did paintings and pictures and they're decorated all over the emu's house. And it is really, really neat to see It that. is really cool <laughs> to see how many people love bamboo and cashew and peekaboo. And at the top of my list of neat things to see about the emus is seeing them run around and get their exercise. <laughs> Oh, I thought I was getting plowed over. <laughs> Emu workout plan. And then I must admit, the more that we were around the emus, the more my adrenaline started to calm and settle down and I began to feel more comfortable with being around them. Especially after seeing Jake have Cashew right there at his face and she would like be there and then she would kind of like nip, but she wouldn't get him. It was like they were very comfortable with each other and he was just like really, really comfortable with being around the emu. And it got to the point where it was like we were more hands-on, we were petting them, and just the comfort was getting there. What was it like for you being around an emu? It was fine, and you know, if they get a little too close, you just kind of push their neck back. You don't have to like, you know, be forceful or anything. You just slowly take their head and push it back, and they were fine. Shirt. Are you trying to eat my shirt? Yesterday it was my hair bow. A while ago it was my band. Super cool. But they're very curious. It reminds me like the ostriches whenever we went to go see the ostriches last year and you just kind of had to like push them back when they got a little too close, but they're very curious. They are, but it's really neat to pet their, their feathers. It's really a neat, really, really neat animal. It always like seems like fur in some places, especially on the top of their heads and their necks. He has a little hairdo up here. Yeah, a little mohawk or something. It's like, hey ladies. But their feathers are really, really interesting because they're long and thin and they're not like chicken feathers like we're used to. So petting an emu here, this is pretty interesting. It's got a little hair here, just like right under all the top. I've never done this before, but you've never done it before either. <laughs> and speaking of curious, you had your bracelet on and one of them was nipping at oh, your bracelet. Oh, yeah, they kept trying to take my bracelet off. Also when, also, when you were recording with the camera on your phone, it was like trying to, I guess, get the flowers or something off the phone. Yeah. And, just like pecking and I had to watch my earrings <laughs> to make sure they didn't pull my earrings out. But, um, yeah, it was really interesting. They were a fascinating animal. When we wake. Birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are finally right. The future is bright. Oh, you and I, we got it. Oh, we don't need no more. Oh, even in the hard times, you and I can weather any storm. We've 
before I sleep. Hear the crickets, see the moon. Side by side and through and through. No limit to what we can do. Oh, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Crazy, but things are finally right. Well, that's it for our visit at White House on the Hill. We do have another video where I milked the cow and and that was kind of fun, but that's for another time. But if you haven't heard of Jake and Becky, they do have a channel called White House on the Hill on YouTube, and you can follow along with them and their adventures, as well as the adventures with their emus. Well, that's it for this video, and stay tuned for more of our adventures. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do make sure you click the subscribe button and uh, click the bell to receive notifications each time we release a new video. See you next time. Bye, guys.